to another episode of the Charlie Bahama show and we are here somewhere as you can see we moved again <laughs> but we are somewhere and uh, I'll get look at the map later on in there but we have a fantastic show for you and maybe actually this next person Jerome Sawyer who's gonna be on the show can help us out because he's a, an investigative reporter and he has fantastic shows on right now on the record and on the front lines which is very exciting we're gonna talk to him about that Oh, Ainsley, thank you it's so stated. much. Yes. Oh, thank you, Ainsley. So we're going to talk to Jerome Sawyer about that and his career, his long career, which I've known him from the beginning as well. So this is going to be very exciting. And maybe Jerome Sawyer, using his investigative prowess, can tell me where we are. All right? Charlie Bahama Show, come on back. The Charlie Bahama Show. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to the Charlie Bahama Show. And now we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, and an old friend of mine, Jerome Sawyer, is in the house. Jerome, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Charlie, I'm good. Uh, you know, making the best of it. Um, this is such a, a crazy environment we live in now. I mean, here we are talking virtually. Who would have who would have sunk it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And but it must be exciting for you also, even though it is uh, a tenuous time, it's exciting because you being in the news, this is, you know, there's hey, 2020 is like a news event over 10 years. I don't think we've had this much news in one year over 10 years. Not in my entire career. I mean, and I've been doing this since I was 17. I've never, we've never had such an impactful um, series of events. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just COVID, it's everything that's, that's, that's happened as a result of it. I mean, this is, this is something that we're going to, people are going to talk about for another hundred years. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, 2020. Yeah. And you talk about 17. I remember when you first came to, I mean, I looked at some pictures of you. I can't even recognize you. You look so innocent and so, Whoa. you know, it's like, and, and hey, me too, though. I mean, I was, you know, I was young back then too, doing, because, you know, uh, just so everybody knows, where I was doing the show Electric Air, Jerome came to that studio, uh, young and, but I mean, you had, was a that you was, had fire in your eyes. I mean, you yeah, were ready from then. It was, it was crazy. I, I, had come, I, I was coming home for the summer and um, of course, you know, I'm a, I was a communications major and um, uh, somehow my mom made a call to Joan Aubrey at the counselors and uh, I, you know, I, I had a conversation with Joan about coming to work there for the summer and I walked in, I had no broadcast experience or anything. And like Charlie ran past with all this activity going on. And I, you know, I'm trying to understand, you know, the PR side, the broadcast side. And then next thing I know we're, we're out on a shoot doing electric air, you know, and I'm like, what is this about? You know? And of course in those days, MTV, VH1, BET, that, that was all the rage. And, you know, you were bringing, you know, the Bahamian version of that to television. And that, that was so exciting just to work on. We were here. Yeah. And the, and the young cameramen, you know, they were happy because they got to go to, we got to go to all these uh, concerts backstage and hang out with the celebs. So. We were excited. Listen, we were excited. You didn't make much money. You worked long hours. You never got paid. But well, you were just excited to be there, you know, and to be a part of it. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, things ain't changed. I still lo work long hours and don't get paid much, so I need to go your route, you know? <laughs> I just feel like you're paid what you're worth. <laughs> you know, things ain't changed much, but yeah, no, but I've seen your career. I mean, you went on to ZNS. and um, I mean, but, but you were like the, the forebear of, of news. I mean, of course, there's the Charles Carters and all that before you. But man, I mean, right now in the Bahamas, you know, Jerome Sawyer is the is the stand, you know, the standard you you look up to, and I'm sure a lot of young seventeen year olds looking up to you too, going like, "Wow, the Jerome Sawyers," you know. 
it's 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 humbling because even now within the industry i have people who say to me you know i chose this career because i watched you on television uh, I have so many people that I mentor that are still in the business uh, that are, you know, that are also stars in their own right and doing things. And, you know, whether they were summer students or whether they were interns or whether they were, you know, they were employed under me in other places and doing work. I, I, I'm, I take a lot of pride in that and I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by it, you know, and for me, that's a legacy. I don't care what work I do uh, as a journalist. It's what I leave behind and what I would have left with people you mm -hmm. know uh, that that's the most important part to me and that gives me really the most pleasure i mean i like i like the new stuff i like the current affairs but that's what gives me the most satisfaction knowing that i would have impacted the lives of a of now i would say almost two generations of of reporters and, and you're still so young that's the thing man you're still <laughs> so young <laughs> you, know. you say you're as young as you feel exactly when, when i'm running on the beach at goodman's day at five in the morning i'll remember that <laughs> yeah well listen before we go to our first break i see two wonderful pictures behind you so tell me who they are so these are my great grandparents um savalita and thomas hope um my grandmother my great grandmother was a midwife i can't remember what my great grandfather did but um i never knew them they were deceased by the time i was born and after my grandmother's death I found them in her room uh, and I recognized who they were. Well, I asked my mother at the time, you know, who are these? She said, oh, these are great grandparents. And so I had them framed and I have them up on the wall here uh, at our family home. And, you know, it's a reminder of, your, of my heritage and who I am. And every time people come to the house, they always say, you know, who are these folks? Um, and I'm always very happy to, uh, to tell people who they are. So, yeah, those are my great grandparents. So. Yeah. They're beautiful, beautiful pictures. So, thank you. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll go to a break, and then when we come back, we'll talk about uh, your two shows um, that you have on now, and yeah. uh, and then a little bit more about uh, you know the business. All right. Sure. All right. We'll be right back. More Charlie Bahama show right after this. The Charlie Bahama show. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to the Charlie Bahama Show, and we are here with Jerome Sawyer. And Jerome, it's so good that, you know, we got to catch up on, on a lot. And, you know, we've been friends for a long time, and I've always loved your career and respected you. Um, and, and now you have, I see two shows. Of course, you had On the Record, but this new exciting show I saw clips of, and we're going to show clips of both the shows on our show. But On the Front Lines, man, that's so exciting. And I see a theme. Everything is on the... <laughs> <laughs> on the record, on the front line. So funny story. <laughs> I love the way it's shot. It, it makes you feel like you're with you. I mean, were you scared sometimes because you're you're on the front lines? Well, I have to first of all give you the history of it. We started shooting that in 2018, um, in September of 2018, uh, and those episodes have not come out yet. They will come. They will come later on, and then. About a year later, um, we got access to the police force. The first show was really with the defense force. Mm. And to be very honest, we, shot, we started shooting the show to be a special edition of On the Record. And then as I started sitting, I, as I sat down and I started going through the material, I said, this is more. There's something we have here. And um, I said to David Burroughs at the time, I said, I think I've got another show. And I sort of, I pitched the idea to him. I said, we could do these half hour shows and let's call it on the front lines because literally that's what it is. And so we started working on it and we were getting ready to launch the shows. And I literally had to stop working on them to focus on Hurricane Dorian. And, and that, that literally, I remember the day I was like, okay, I have to put this down now because this monster storm is coming and we've got to focus on it. And so of course, Dorian came and you know we were months and months into that. And so then I picked it up again. I said, okay, good. We're going to launch on the front lines. And we've got, you know, the first few episodes. We're ready to go. And literally, as I was about to start, here comes COVID-19. And um, then, you know, we finally settled on, on, a, on a launch date. And again, I'm about to go in studio to record the pieces. And I literally tested positive with COVID. 
And so, yeah, and so I was out for about a month. And finally, you know, I got back in because, you know, the elements of it were there. And so finally the show premiered uh, a few weeks ago. And it, it's such a relief just to get it on the air. But I had I had gotten permission. I'd written to the minister and say, hey, I want to do this. You know, can we go? And he gave me permission first to go with the defense force and then with the police force. And the defense force show was going to come on later. Uh, but I was literally out to sea on the HMBS Derwood Knowles for a couple of days. And uh, those episodes are really, you think the police episodes are good. They're really exciting. Oh. And then uh, I, I was able to get permission through, you know, first of the minister and then through the uh, then commissioner of police to do a ride out and hang out with the police for a couple of days. And yeah, that was kind of scary. <laughs> I can imagine, man. Should we get out of the car? Should we stay here? Um, and there was one particular scene in one of the episodes where we arrived on the scene and they chase these guys and everybody leaves us. And it's just the cameraman and myself sitting in the back in a car. And I'm like, so what if these dudes run back? <laughs> but it is, um, and, and already I've gotten, you know, requests from, from other agencies. Like we were literally in discussions with the PMH the public hospitals authority with doing some episodes there and then uh something else happened and, and threw us off but in the in, in the new year i hope to to really do a lot more but i wanted to give people first of all i wanted to sensitize people to the work that our men and women who are in the armed forces and services are doing because i think we miss sometimes the dangers and the difficulties that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, the police pulls you up and give you a ticket or something, you, you're, you're pissed, but you don't know what it is that officer is in, in, what he or she is going through because they're working a 12 hour shift. And, and you know, it's not making any excuses, but what we're hoping to do is, is to create some understanding and appreciation for it and create some good TV. And trust me, it's good TV. No, I saw, I saw, yeah, they sent me some advance and all that. And I saw it, it is good. I mean, I was like at the edge of my seat and I'm like, man, I would be sort of nervous riding and some of these, you know, aspects, which, uh, you know, I figure, especially if they, if everybody leave you and you're just sitting there with the cameraman, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, was, I was like, I tell the cameraman, bro, do you think we should do? <laughs> Run! <laughs> wow. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to show some clips of it so people can see exactly what we're talking about. And, uh, and then we'll come back on the other side after these commercial breaks and talk some more with Jerome Sawyer. All right? You think people realize the great sacrifice? Sacrifices that you all make. I know, sir. You know, um, you know, people, you know, like you say, a lot of time you you will hear people, like you say, you know, the the, the pot cake sound. They, they don't know you till they need you. They don't. Mm -hmm. They only love me when they need me, right? So mm -hmm. That's how it is. You know, you'll have people. You'll, you'll talk bad, but you one moment, and then when they're victims, then they're happy to see you. You know, but you know, like I say, we we're not faced by it. We we here. We here to protect and serve. You know, it's our duty. So we just we just do it. I mean, this, this is what this is what we love to do. Yeah, you know, gone in your face, so you're thinking about home. There's a lot of things be on your mind, so you but you have to be justified. So justified with a gun on your face. And you have a split second to think, either you or him. Every day, these men and women put their lives on the line, providing law enforcement and life-saving exercises. They are on the front lines. Hey, welcome back to the Charlie Bahama Show, and we are here with Jerome Sawyer. And we talked about on the front lines, um, but let's talk a little bit about on the record, uh, which you did before, um, and it still comes on. You've interviewed so many people over your, your long, illustrious career. Who is, in the top of your head, any of the, the most interesting people you've interviewed? Like, who, who just really went, you, just made you go, wow? Um, you know, that's a, that's a very hard question to answer. Uh, because I've interviewed so many people in so many different respects, mm -hmm. uh, who have come to, from so many different backgrounds, um, it's... You know, each, each, each time I have a good interview, it's for a different reason. Right. Like I, you know, one, I think maybe over a year ago, I would have had Mother Pratt on, mm -hmm. and I've known Mother Pratt for so long. 
Um, and I, you know, we, she tells the story and I tell the story. Mother Brown was responsible for me going off to college. Oh. You know, she said to my mother, what, he, what is he doing after high school? And that's how I got off to college. And so interviewing like a Mother Pratt for me was so familiar. Right. It, I, I, there was so much about her that I knew just from personal experience. So that was so comforting for me. Um, prior to the last year, well, on, on the record came on months before the last election and really was meant to be a political show and a debate style. And, um, and so prior to the elections last year, we also got an opportunity to interview uh, former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram. And he really hadn't spoken for a long time. Um, and having him on the show too was very interesting. I sort of forgot what a tough person he is to interview. Uh, but he's tough, but he's also humorous. No, he's uh, so funny. And you have to understand sort of how to, you know, how to, and he and I have had some classic fights over the years in press conferences and things like that. But, you know, the thing, like I said, there's always a mutual respect, which mm -hmm. I enjoy. Um, and, you know, the, the kinds of interviews that, that you do over the years really help to shape your perspective on people. And, you know, people all have different styles. And that's what I try to bring to the show, my own style. Um, and people always remark that they like my style because it's not always in your face, but it's almost a buildup. Like, I'm going to get you to talk, but I'm going to get you to say some things you probably didn't even realize you wanted to say just in my approach. Some people are, you know, very dogmatic and in your face. I prefer a little different approach. I can come, I can get you now, but you know, I, <laughs> yeah, you know, I got, I got make you comfortable and then I can come grab you. <laughs> uh, but people, you know, people like to show the debate style was really the, that was the foundation. We started with that. But once elections were over, people, they were not interested in, in debating mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, but certainly as we move into elections, again, we're going to bring that back. But what I had to do was pivot with the show uh, so that we looked at a lot more current affairs and issues. And so, for instance, in the wake of Dorian, we've done a lot of extensive reporting on going to the islands, you know, going to Grand Bahama and Abaco and going to areas that nobody else was featuring and talking, just talking to people. And I find that the show has evolved in many ways, you know, in that, in that respect. And then once COVID hit and we had new, I mean, during my COVID experience, I was, I was literally doing that show from home. So um, again, it, because of, of what we were facing, we had to find a way to shoot me and to shoot guests. So of course, Skype and Zoom came in quite handy. Right. And so that opened up an entire new audience to us because now we're talking to people, we're talking to international guests. And so it's, 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 it's an exciting time. It, you know, it's strange in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. And then even with the show, I found that in the COVID experience, what I had to do was, or what I tried to do was just focus on facts and information mm. and just give people what they need, uh, things that they need to understand to try and get them through yeah. this. Because there is so much noise out there. Yeah. Well, before I let you go, and I mean, because I was surprised to, to hear you say you had COVID, tell, tell I mean, it'll be great for people to know. Tell us how, what happened to you, how, how it affected you, and also how you're feeling and how you're doing now. I literally, we were, we were just, we were in the midst of doing a Dorian anniversary show. Um, I had just done the production work on that. And because of issues with the studio, we had to outsource another production company to put that together. And so I was working and doing that. A lot, a lot of what I was doing with that was virtual. And so days after that production was done, I just, I started feeling weird. I was really tired. And I thought, eh, it must have been because I've been doing a lot on the show. And um, I just sort of made the decision to quarantine myself just because I wasn't well. I thought it was my sinuses. And then once the symptoms started, I had with the temperature and the body aches. And I said, okay, I spoke to my doctor. I said, this may be it. And so when I went and got tested, you know, the test, they called me immediately and said, you're positive. Uh, but at that time, at that point, I was already quarantined away from my family and work and and so I just sort of continued at home and I, I told a couple of people at work and uh, I, I came on the show that I did the show that week and I said to them, hey, I'm just quarantining at home and I'm feeling well. And I announced during the show that I was positive, unbeknownst to most of my crew um, and even to my guest. I had a doctor on and she was talking about, you know, the stigma involved and people not being afraid. And I said, you know, I had to make an on the spot decision. I said, well, you know, I can't sit here and act like I'm fine and I'm just at home. And so I said, you know, I, I you know, I tested positive days ago. And that changed the narrative in many ways, I think. 
because a lot of people said to me, thank you. Yeah. For, you know, for, for yeah. saying that publicly because, you know, it, it, I, I'm hoping it gave people, you know, the impetus to speak about their own experiences and to understand that it's nothing to be ashamed of. Right. You know, it could happen to any one of us. And hopefully, you know, my experience would have helped others to get through theirs or, you know, maybe even prevented some people from getting it because yeah. I, I made pretty sure that I locked myself away and protected everyone around me um, and did what I had to do. I'm so happy you're, you're yeah. healthy. And so all the folks out there, I mean, everybody watches you anyway, but I'll just remind them on the record and on the front lines. And Jerome Sawyer, man, it's so good to see you again, all right? So you stay safe and healthy. Keep up the good work, too, Charlie. It's good to see you back. I'm, I'm happy you're still in the game. That's important. You know, us, us old guys keep in the game. Ah, yeah. Oh, my back <laughs> All right, buddy. You take care of yourself, all right? And welcome back. The authors of Islanders in the Stream refer to the period of 1963 to 1973 like this. No other 10-year period in Bahamian history saw so much economic, political, and social changes as that which began with the Bay Street's last election victory and ended in the achievement of Bahamian independence under the all-black PLP government. One of the more significant events of that decade was the attainment of majority rule. Tonight, we take a look at where we have come since the events of that day. My guests tonight really need no introduction or little introduction. Former Governor General Sir Arthur Folks and former Minister Sir Charles Carter, both of these men have illustrious careers as journalists and broadcasters, respectively, politicians and historians. Gentlemen, welcome to On the Record. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It is an honor for us to have you in here tonight. I, I refer to you at the top of the show as two powerhouse <laughs> guests tonight who have, who have come to talk to us about a significant event. Follow Charlie Bahama on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or go to charliebahama.com. Well, that was another fantastic episode of The Charlie Bahama Show, and I want to thank Jerome Sawyer, my old friend, for coming on this week. And, man, it's going to be exciting watching that show, uh, those shows he has. He has so many shows on, but especially on the front lines. All right? So until next week, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Charlie Bahama, or charliebahama.com. All right? Wear your mask, be safe, and love everybody, man. Love everybody. Cheers. Charlie